So welcome again to the Wisdom Factory and English edition, despite we both here are Germans and normally we talk in German, but we thought it would be better to present the topic, the leadership for the challenges of today in English, because Heike Grosch, my, how can you say, um, she's not only of the same country, but also of the same city where I come from in Germany, but we actually never met there also. She, she is a little bit younger than me, just some months. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so we probably wouldn't have met anyway. So um, she, Heike Grosch, she has developed a special way of leadership and she is doing courses. And I ask her now to introduce herself and say some words about the courses, but then we will talk about what this special way is, because as everybody knows, we are in a special situation, which with the old tools, we don't seem to be able to resolve. So we need some new tools. So over to you, Heike. <laughs> Thank you so much, Heidi. So great to be here and I'm very happy to talk to you about leadership and what I think is so needed today in this um, realm of leadership. Um, I for myself um, worked a, a long time in a leading position. Um, I had more than 150 employees and I learned a lot about leadership. What is yeah, what, what, what is a good way of leadership and what maybe could be rearranged in this um, context. And so um, I, for myself, did um, a few um, scholarships and, and things to um, evolve for myself and to go on and to find a real profound way. How could it... Um, be that we are leaders and that we can um, develop a world who is really um, a good place to be for all entities, not only for humans. And um, what I saw on my way is um, the first thing is the connection, the connection from the leader to the leader, him or herself. That is the first point, what is so important. When there's no connection, the leader, um, that is what I observed, um, is doing things that will harm other people or other entities, whatever. But when he or she is really connected, that won't happen. And that is the reason why I um, collected a, a lot of methods and a lot of um, things I um, experienced on my way and created a leadership program to support leaders who are in charge for um, our development today. And when, when we see all these troubles we have right now, all these really fast going changes, um, a lot of leaders, um, yeah, are some kind of lost in these, um, all these troubles they have. And um, in my program, I, I will continue unless you interrupt me. <laughs> in, in my program, yeah, too, too. Um, the, the first thing is that um, we will do some kind of reconnection. Because the reconnection is really the basis for um, the other developments. And so I might interrupt you a little bit because yes, uh, <laughs> we are talking about the challenging times today and we have uh, governments who obviously are not connected to themselves. You can also see that in their face or they are like this, you know, uh, something like this or they are like, di, 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 di. so that's not authentic. They are somehow, how can you say? 
even how they move. That's, that's not the way of a person who is knowing themselves, who is knowing uh, their own interior and has self-compassion. They look like, ah, I have to do that. I will do that by all costs. Bam, 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 bam. Not our, yeah, I don't want to talk about that. But <clears throat> And then not having had children, for instance, as many of our leaders don't have, how can they even have an idea of what connection is? Because I don't have children, so I admire you. You have children. You, you know what real connection is with a, a, a human being which came out of your body. But if you don't know it, you can try to understand it. I have animals and so, you know, for whom I take care. But if you never had this, how can you pretend to care for other people. You just can't, you haven't learned it. And overall, <clears throat> in all Western countries, we are under the spell of trauma from past events, at least in Europe, but I think also in America, a good part of, of the people are after all these wars. And so traumatized people, traumatized others. So I think what you are doing, the first thing is to reconnect to, to oneself and get to know oneself, get to know the good sides and also the bad sides and not pretend that everything you do is good. So how do you do it when they are challenging people? Um, how do I do it? Um, observing. I, um, yes, I, I, I what, what I do in my courses is to teach the participants to observe themselves, just to recognize what is going on inside of me, what kind of thoughts are coming across my mind, what kind of feelings I have. And this topic feelings is a real important thing because a lot of leaders are disconnected to their feelings because when they would feel what their decisions do with other people over the world itself, then they are not, um, um, they, they are not in the position to execute um, these real strange or harming uh, measures they do right now. Um, and the, the point feelings is in my program is the, the second part where we are talking about feelings because we are all human. And when, you, when we don't look at our feelings and um, just, just go on, then the feelings will break through in a moment where, it's, where, we, where it won't fit. So it, it is a much better way in my experience to um, know my feelings about a special situation or a person or whatever, and to observe, oh, right now I feel anger or right now I feel joy, really to observe and um, to have this in my mind. That is the first step. Yeah, and uh, people need also to know when you suppress feelings, which we actually have learned in our childhood to suppress our feelings, then they come out, they direct us unconsciously. You know, they are always trying to get there. And as they cannot uh, go in their direct way, they come in a disguised way. And they will lead our behavior and our decisions, but not in a good way. So it's better to get aware of the direct feelings and um, have integrate them without uh, giving way to destructive uh, reactions, but giving way to compassionate uh, reactions towards oneself. And that's the other thing, uh, and to others, logically. Uh, I wanted to say before, um, yeah, observation. <clears throat> I remember in my life, I always observed myself, but not with this goal, which you mentioned, but to say that was wrong, bang, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, observation alone is not enough. It needs to be directed into a 
non-judgmental and in a loving kindness um, setting. Yeah, that's the key, indeed. Loving kindness is really an, an observation like, ah, okay, there's anger, not there's anger and I cut it. Yeah, that's right what you say. And that's really the key to be kind to myself and not, not to judge myself for this and that and, oh, I'm so a bad person or so. No, that's not the key. The key is really to observe in a loving way. Yeah. And to um, observe in this way the values I have, for example. The, because what I see is that people in many cases do not know their values. What is important for me in my life? And when I know that um, a fair treatment is a really big value for me, then I understand why I'm angry when my neighbor um, treats me unfair in a way. And that will bring some kind of consciousness to our mind. And we understand ourselves much more when we are um, really in contact with our values and see, okay, the, my, my biggest values are this and that. Yeah. And that and is then, um, being another being, really big point. Being treated unfair often it has been in childhood, you know, that you had been treated unfair. And children uh, naturally know fairness. When you leave them alone, they develop firm fairness. They develop in play, they develop a moral behavior unless you go in the in you know and punish them for whatever they do they will find that out by themselves and when then they are treated unfair by adults because why they are playing with the children and they are a little bit unfair and then they, they figure that out you know mm -hmm. but when you are treated unfair by adults that's sort of a trauma no that uh, keeps you staying alert for Fair, unfairness and you then might have the way you I want to treat other people fair mm -hmm. and then you may be triggered when you are not you yourself are not treated mm -hmm. how, how do you work with this um with this idea of values or um yeah, and and with these triggers for instance when you see you are not uh, uh, treated uh, fair and this is triggering you mm -hmm. and then how Instead, an authoritarian leader would say, oh, you go into jail, you know, because you have treated me unfair. But leadership in a different way, how would they respond? <laughs> That's a really interesting question, because um, I think leadership in a new way recognized that, oh, this is unfair for me and will go in a dialogue to the person who did it and said, okay, I see for me, your behavior is unfair. That is what, what is um, coming to me when you act in this way. And that produces anger in, within me. And I wish that we both um, deal with one another in a fair way. So I um, talk about my observation I talk about what it makes me feel and I talk about my wishes, my wish, how we can go on in this special um, situation. And more or less, this is um, according to Rosenberg, the uh, non-environmental communication. So um, I think this tool is really important to have in mind to not um, um, follow the anger and um, scream or whatever to the, uh, on the other person rather than um, be conscious with, with that situation. And um, when, when, I am, when I feel this, um, I, inside of me, I'm like stepping back one step just to have the bigger picture just to see what is really going on here right now. And then I try to feel what is inside of me. Why is it like this? 
and what do I wish to have in the future? Do you have also tools like breathing or something to, to get oneself out of the immediate reaction to make an interval because of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. Um, in, in this course, uh, we have some yoga lessons for every module and there are six modules. And for every module, I created special yoga lessons um, and meditation lessons to get in contact for the first time with this kind of special um, breathing and um, turning into um, oneself. Um, I, I will guide this for um, really a good reason to reconnect the people. And it is really important to have it, to come to these places where we are humans again. Yeah. Yeah, so important. And how good that you are also yoga teacher. You are, you are combining so many skills that it's marvelous. And I think it's what we need today because what has brought us to this place where we are with the big conflicts and big problems is because we were so specialized in only one thing and we wouldn't see neither right nor left. No? And now we need, and not by chance, we also meet in integral theory, we need to integrate the things and get a bigger picture. That, that means we, we need to, to know more than only one thing. We need to be not really experts, but at least have a sufficient knowledge of many things to understand what do I need here. And then when we understand we are not able to furnish uh, one thing, for instance, psychotherapy or something, when we need this person needs psychotherapy, but I'm not a psychotherapist, so I send them to somebody else instead of trying to keep the people, you know, because oh, we can make them. No, uh, that's that, that's an in integral consciousness. You don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know enough about these things that you can understand. This person has a real problem in this or that or the next uh, field where I am not an expert. And so I transfer this person mm -hmm. to somebody else. But I give them the ground. How can I say? the ground setting, the ground setting up of uh, development. And, uh, you know, for many people, maybe enough. For other people, it leads to the recognition, oh, there's something I should go deeper. And I will find the right ex expert. I don't like the word expert anymore. <laughs> the right person who right. is able to help. <laughs> yeah. Yes, of course. That is, that is really important to have this in mind. Where are my boundaries and not to go across them and really um, to have um, experts in my surrounding what I have, because it is really important to have experts for different um, things for, for example, uh, uh, what, what you said right now. Um, I, I wanted have, to say uh, in English, I'm not sure if you say boundaries in that case, I think you say you went limits. Okay, that limits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because boundaries is more for, as far as I understand English, for uh, knowing I go up to here, uh, protect myself. These are my boundaries and I don't allow anybody to come in. If some English speaking person is out there and can give us some uh, <laughs> some lesson in, in English and what the meaning is. But in this case, I thought it's, uh, it's limits, that you know your limits and you know, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Yeah, and that, that is why I don't do this program alone. I have a partners and um, every person has her or his special um, realm where he or she contributes to the program. So um, as you said, I have a psychologist um, on my side and I have um, one who is special for um, getting um, to know what to work. How can I go to a work what I really love to? So um, for every um, thing, um, I have a lawyer as well in, in this um, realm. So um, a lot of person 
bring their inputs and we will be able to um, get out the best for the participants. And what, what is really the core of, of this program I'd like to mention, because it's um, for, for me it's really so important, is love, simply love. And now we can ask why love in a um, setting with leaders and why love in a setting, what is really um, in, in a corporate um, meaning and, and, and in, in, in corporates, um, we don't talk about love. But I think we, we should, we definitely should talk about it. What I mean is the love to myself and the love to what I do. And to look at this, what do I do right here? And do I love it? And to what extent do I love it? Because so many hours per day, we are in our work and we are doing stuff. And when we don't love it, we will be ill in an, a more or less amount of time. And so we look at love on this special way to have leaders who really understand, okay, I do what I love or I, what I do, I don't love so much, but after eight hours, I close the door and then I do what I love. That could be two possibilities, for example, what came out after the program. So really to, to feel where do my love go is the, the heart of the program. And uh, in the following, we are talking about vision. Let me just uh, remark to that, because you mentioned already <clears throat> that when uh, you have to do things you don't love to do, you really maybe hate to do, that makes you ill. But we have now also studies uh, about how much more effective people are also in their company when they love what they do, because they will be quicker, they will be more efficient, they will, you know, better, they will just be better. <clears throat> you know it yourself, when you don't like to do a thing, then for instance, um, washing the dishes or something, then you may let fall something because you are not attentive and things like that. And in the work context, it's the same thing, you know? So it's so important. It should be uh, important to the companies too, you know, mm -hmm. that their employees uh, love what they do. And yes. that they are able to do what they should do. And I, I just I make a little curve. Um, <clears throat> there is Susan Kreuter, for instance, who has developed the levels of development in regard to uh, what people are able to do best. You know, when you are in a certain level with order and regularities, you should be the, uh, uh, how do you say, these people who do the calculations and the, the invoices and things, uh, administrative work, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but you shouldn't go into the development part uh, you know, there should be the creative people, you know, and so when you know that in your company and you are the leader and have to, to, to bring people to certain tasks, you better know what they are capable to do and what they love to do, you know. Yes, that would be much more effective and the, the outcome would be great even in money as in happiness for the people who buy the products of the company and work for the company. Of course, that's the reason why I integrated that as a core element in my program. Yeah. And another big thing is the vision, the own vision. What, what do I have? What do I really have as a task in the life? I'm here on the earth. And how does that fit to the company I work for? Are the visions, can they go together or is it not possible? Because when, um, in, in my experience, it, it was like this for, um, for a time that I worked against my own vision. And I can say, don't do it. <laughs> and, and to know what is my vision, we, we are starting there. And um, 
because the vision is nothing you have like this. It is more or less a process for an, um, for time. And then um, when, when we um, ended up in this program, we have an idea what could a vision be, but afterwards that will go on. That is what, what is my experience, that the vision is not set and like stone, it is more fluent and it could add other things what come, comes to the person and, and develop in a way. Yeah. And development is the last module of the course. We are talking about what could development be for the person who is in the course, because a lot of things maybe are clearer than before. I know where I am. I know where, what are my feelings? What are my values? I know what I love. I know my vision. And what can I do with this knowing? Of course, it is a kind of self-knowing what I have. It is probably bigger than before. And we are talking about what can we do with this kind of knowledge? And how can we go on in a healthy way, healthy for ourselves, but healthy for the earth as a as whole and all the entities who are on it? Yeah, that's definitely a um, path of development. And I wanted to say for the vision, you are talking about the vision as not a complete picture, which let's say people who have a certain goal, they know the complete picture. They want to be the first in, I don't know what, sports, some sports, and then they work and work and work, and maybe they're the first or the second. But many people like me, for instance, we, I didn't have any idea what I would going to be uh, later in my life. But you have a certain ground equipment or, the, or also ground love, you would say, for certain things. And this is like a little bit of, you know, a, a, a direction in which you go. And then you try out and see, oh, and then there comes something, oh, that's now what I want to do, you know? So uh, it's a development also in the vision, it's more that you go uh, towards a North Star, more or less, that's the direction. And that's, by the way, a very feminine way, mm -hmm. living in this, uh, in this way and going ahead in this way, where the male way is often the masculine, I wouldn't say male, but the masculine energy is more, that's the goal. And there I have to go, bang. And it can cost whatever it needs uh, to be done to go there. By the feminine way is saying, oh, okay, there I want to go. Uh, what can I use for that? And we look around and go, and then we discover something else, and then we do a course correction and go a little bit more. And at the end, we are there and say, oh, how did I get there? <laughs> and you are expressing the feminine way. That's very nice. And it's needed in our societies because we came here on this disaster of the world by masculine ways of being and planning and doing and being so, what do you call that? So not direct only, but going, we would say in, in German, über Leichen gehen, uh, uh, taking, you know, having the goal and sacrifice everything. Even yeah, whatever it takes. Yeah, whatever it takes, that's it. Now, with, you know, when they want to, for their own ideas, sacrifice the health of so many people, inclusive the children, track, wanting to put them some poisonous, un, un, um, proven chemicals or whatever it is uh, into their bodies. I mean, that's for their goals, but not for our health, you know, and for... That's the masculine way. And even if women do that, that's the same thing. It's goal driven and it's not love driven. It's not yeah. it's considering. In a way, hmm. just profit. And I, I think. Um, profit and power, by the way. Yes. And, and it's 
to, to, to keep something going, um, power is, is a good thing. But how do you use power? That's what, what I question. Um, and um, I, I question myself when I heard what you said, um, the masculine and the feminine way in the world we are living today, I, I'm with you in these terms, but there will be a stage where masculine, feminine, um, these words are not needed anymore because we, are, we, we have um, males who are um, more like this, like um, going like a river, not straight, um, really have this caring aspect as males. And we will have women who are totally straight. So I, I try to resolve this um, tied to the idea what is male and what is female. But in a way, you are right, because um, what we see today is male driven in most cases. Yeah. And what I'd like to add is the feminine way. Yes, that is what I like to add because it's missing and it's, it's totally badly missing. missing. Yeah. yeah, so needed to yeah. have this. To yeah, have this caring in the world, to have this um, love in the world, because when I I come from this caring idea, I don't ask what is my return on investment. That will be not the first question. It is an important question, of course, because we we need to to live in a way, but that will not be the first one. On, okay, how can we care, yeah. and how can we do it? Yeah. The thing is, uh, I make a distinction between male and female and masculine and feminine, no? because we know that men theoretically have, a, also practically, a feminine part. Jung talks of anima and animus, so that's there. But what has happened in the last, let's say, 100 years and yeah, more 70 years after the war, that women myself too, we thought we are suppressed and we want to become males like men. And so instead of offering our innate gifts of caring, we reinforced and increased the power of the masculine paradigm by stepping into it. So I think first of us, and that's good that you are doing it. We women have to come to a good understanding of feminine energy and what our powers are, our superpowers, let's say, are, and not only agree with them, but what do you say, Ex accept it and even be proud of them that we are, we can give something to the table. We are not defective males. We are, uh, no, we are in our feminine power and we have to offer something. And as it was suppressed for such a long time, it's, I think the first thing which women need to do is to accept it for themselves, that they have an important role to play inside the feminine paradigm and not trying to be better men as so many, especially politicians in the high positions are are doing so many leaders. And so you are trying to reinforce the feminine in leadership, let's say. That's right. And um, what, what for me is one of the first steps is the connection as, as we talked about. But it's not only the connection to ourselves, it is the connection to other people. And um, that is the reason why I am hosting mastermind groups what I feel and experience, what is so important is that we as humans come together and we should really listen to each other in a deep way, deep listening and deep talk, not on the surface. Oh, surface is important to have this first connection, but then really dive deep. And that is what I experience is so healthy for so many people. In these mastermind groups, up to six people come together and are talking about a topic what is really um, moving them, what is really important for them, and they, they need solutions. 
and um, people on, on the orange level coming to these groups with the idea, oh, I need to, um, to reach my goal and um, go further and so. And it is interesting to see when I have them in my group, something happens. Something's changing. These orange people are just open and interested in new stuff. And so they come and what they find is a piece of themselves and a connection to other people they don't know before. And we, we just met a, a few times and we have a really deep connection to each other. And that is what I experience as so healthy. And the, the people are really excited about this connection. And they ask them, themselves, um, why now? Why not two, 10 years before or so? <laughs> but Better now now, than never. <laughs> yeah, e even now it is so important to have um these connections and what 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 i can say these mastermind groups are um com completely online mm -hmm. and even online really this special feeling this spirit of mastermind group comes through i can yes. only agree we got to know in an online group we don't know in person yet i have the feeling that i know you very deeply we did some process work together for a year now. I think our group is uh, existing no? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. I have the feeling to know everybody very deeply, very well. And the processes you had been leading lately, you know, the 4D mapping, uh, it is so astonishing, you know? It's really, how can I say? It's filling me up not simply of joy but of awe i would say of awe yeah mm -hmm. what can happen in these short meetings i mean an hour and a half or something but so mm -hmm. deep insights and such a on your own insights on the whole group insights and this feeling of connection as if we had known for a long time so that's yeah. how i feel and i can only recommend to who is watching this try to do that it's amazing it's really you know you are looking forward to the next time you meet with these people <laughs> yes that's right that's right it, it is like um to uh, meet a family you never met <laughs> yeah it, it's really an interesting and what what i do is is just um to open the space to organize these meetings and to um, bring the right people together. That is what I do. And, and facilitate, no? Yes. You, you give the, the inputs and then that's also the freedom in these groups that you have the feeling to be heard and to, you have your place. And then there is a facilitator who takes care that you can speak, that the others... Uh, uh, listening, you know, uh, without saying, you have to do that, you know, like they did it before. But it's by opening the space and holding the space, a different atmosphere in, in a Bilberian or integral language, you would say a different state of consciousness is created in which things can uh, appear, which can things can arise. And as soon as the participants are willing and able to follow into this opening of space, it is often a miracle. I hardly ever went out without saying, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was great. Uh, yeah. It's really yeah. a great tool to use. Yeah. And um, what, what I think is really important in mastermind groups, as, as I understand it, is the way of listening. Um, and according to Otto Schama, um, we have four stages of listening. And to really listen on the fourth stage where you listen and you, you hear what future is going to emerge. That is really the key to have this insights in mastermind groups, what really 
um, drives uh, people and brings them forward. Yeah, in their own development. And yeah. um, in the end, they, they really see other things um, besides profit and besides um, reaching my own goal. They are really opening up in a way and are developing. And that is great. And to open these spaces, to create these kind of rooms, there is even a real feminine way of being. We have these saloons, for example, in the 18th, 19th century, when you think it, there were women. When I remember right, you, you told me the last time. Yeah. And that is, that is um, in fact, it's not new, yeah. but it is really a feminine quality. Even when, when a, a woman is pregnant, um, they, the woman is creating a space for the baby. Yeah. And so it is, for me, uh, a feminine way of um, making development happen. Yeah. And so I want to talk again to, to English speaking people. I don't think the right word is saloon because that seems like Wild West, but I think the right word is salon. <laughs> but I don't know. Anyway, on the integral conference, I did with other two people, I did a presentation uh, of integral salons. And we have many in the German speaking uh, area, but there are quite a few also in English in England and also some in America, especially in California, I think there are two of them. So these are uh, places where people meet now online, obviously, but in, in person and they are practicing different skills and they are practicing holding space or facilitating processes. And um, if you are interested, uh, I will link the, the video on, on also the re resources, the um, e non-email addresses, how is it called, URLs, you know, of uh, the ones I'm aware of. And so if somebody is interested to, to just listen to integral salon work, <laughs> it is uh, possible. But what you are doing is more than salon. That's really a, um, a te not a teaching, a training, training, training it is called, no? For leading better, have being more complete person in leadership roles and being able then to lead in a different way, which is more, can you say complete, is more, yeah, you said at the beginning on the wider perspective, which is not just goal driven in one direction, you know, as the world is today to the maximum absurdity, but to open up as far as necessary uh, and sometimes as far as possible, because then the new things can emerge when this happens, when the space is open for emergence, you know. That's right. I'm talking too much, so <laughs> over to you. <laughs> but you see, I'm inspired by what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, it, for me, it's also great fun to, to do this work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, so a little bit we have now um, talked about what your program is like. Would you like to say a little bit more about where, when, and so on, and how? Yes, of course. Um, on the 22nd of um, June, um, next week, I will have uh, an um, event on Eventbrite where I describe the um, um, leadership program in detail. So if you're interested in, um, it is um, free of charge and so, um, just drop in and listen if you're interested. And the next um, program will start in uh, September and um, will last for 12 weeks. We will have um, a mixture of one-on-one um, -on -one, uh, coaching sessions as well as group sessions. 
and um, there will be um, yoga lessons and uh, meditation lessons as well. So um, when you know more, then um, just um, come to the um, interactive lecture I will have on Eventbrite. And um, if you like, Heidi, you can link it um, as yes, well. Uh, the thing is, the newsletter goes out only two days before. Will you do other introduction uh, yes. sessions? So, the, so we better uh, give your email address or your what, whatever they can go, because Eventbrite is will finish after this one. So we need the um, the information. I think the website is it on? Is it? Uh, did you uh, finish the website? Um, not yet, and the will be finished uh, and until the end of July, mm -hmm. but. Um, I will have another um, interactive lecture in um, July. Ah, okay. And so I, I will give the dates and then um, I will it, it is possible to, to dig deeper into the topic and ask questions. And so, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, fine. So I wish that many people will listen to that and will be inspired and uh, find a new way of not only being in the world, and it's not about finding it because people who are listening to that, they have already had a glimpse, but having somebody who accompanies them on, on the way of exploring more and bringing a higher good, let's say higher good, more good to the world and to their own life and to their work. So yes. that's it. Thank you very, very, very much. And yeah, thank you, Heidi. It was my pleasure to be here. Yeah, really. It's always my pleasure to, to talk with you. It's really great. And I wish you good luck and everybody who is participating. A good development and much joy. I guarantee it will be. Bye-bye. <laughs>